Now we turn from the C-suite to a celebrity trailblazer, some call the diva of the disenfranchised. I'm talking about comedian Margaret Cho. I told my mother when I was 14, I wanted to be a comedian. And she said, oh, maybe it's better if you just die. In 1993, Arsenio Hall introduced Cho to late night TV audiences. Just a year later, Cho came to prime time in the ABC series, All American Girl, with Cho playing the role of Margaret Kim, a character created just for her. The sitcom about a culture clash and the generation gap made history as the first prime time series to feature a Korean family. Tell me a little bit about your, your mom and dad and how they felt about their teenager doing comedy. So they, first of all, didn't really quite understand what stand-up comedy was. Also, they never saw Asian people represented anywhere in the media, so they just didn't think it was possible for me to have a career in stand-up comedy. My father went to Seoul in the mid-'80s, and he spoke to a mudang, which is a shaman, and she told him that I would be an international star within two years, and then he was like, Oh, oh, yeah, it's fine. You could do. Go, go, go ahead. You'll be fine. Like the the weird vote of confidence from the Korean shaman actually gave him the sort of like idea. Oh, I guess it'll be okay. I remember, really, back in the early '90s when I first saw you, and I just remember thinking, like, wow, you were kind of, I think, among the very like female uh, Asian who was public in comedy. Am I wrong about that? I was the only one. I think that there were um, other comedians beforehand that you would see, um, but not as uh, Asian American. I mean, maybe I'm naive, but that just blows my mind. Like, it was not 1964, no. 1994. That's right. And we had never had a Korean American family sort of as the center of some kind of a, of a show on television. How did that show come about? It came about through um, that period of time where it was really based on finding stand-up comedians who had a unique point of view that you could develop television shows around. And this show was controversial within the Korean-American community because the last time Koreans had seen themselves on television, the only other time they had seen themselves on television was after the LA uprising. So mm -hmm. they were on their rooftops um, defending their businesses in Koreatown after the Rodney King verdict was read out. So it was like a very um, contentious time to be a Korean. Hmm. It was tough, but I'm glad that it happened. I think it led to you know, what we have now as um, Asian American entertainment. There's so much that um, we owe to that show, which I think is, is really phenomenal. And it's pretty much my greatest achievement that I've inspired an entire generation of Asian American comedians in particular to pursue comedy. I think for a lot of trailblazers and troublemakers, it just can feel a little hopeless. Like it's a, it's a bad time if you focus on that. There is a cyclical nature of violence towards Asian Americans. There is some sort of um, idea that we're not part of America, but we've been here. So. The way that I look at Asian Americans is that we have this tremendous resilience to keep carrying on, and I know that we'll get through this. And finding humor there is challenging, but it's also essential to uh, fixing the problem and getting over it. Margaret Cho, I'm such a big fan. It's so nice to meet you, like, remotely. Yes. <laughs> like, so great to talk to you. I'm Thank such a fan of yours. Thank us. you.